My Bio 202 model project topic is bulk flow and filtration in the capillaries. To begin with, blood flows from arterial to capillary to venule. The arterial delivers blood into the capillary. The capillary has thin walls which allow the diffusion of gases, nutrients, and wastes. After that, the blood flows into the venule. As you can see, filtration occurs at the arterial end of the capillary. The driving force for filtration is hydrostatic pressure, which pushes the interstitial fluid out of the blood. As you can see in the picture above, filtration pushes out the interstitial fluid. Because filtration takes place in the arterial end of the capillary, capillary hydrostatic pressure is highest. Capillary hydrostatic pressure forces water and solutes through gaps into continuous capillaries. After filtration takes place and pushes out the interstitial fluid from the arterial end, it is then, well 90% of the interstitial fluid is reabsorbed into the venule side of the capillary. It is reabsorbed thanks to osmotic pressure, which helps basically suck in the fluid back into the blood. And because it has a high concentration of stuff or albumin in the blood. As you can see down here, filtration or pushing out the interstitial fluid out of the arterial end happens through hydrostatic pressure. So it's helping push that interstitial fluid out. Meanwhile, osmotic pressure is helping the fluid back in, so reabsorption occurs through the venule side. Extra 10% of interstitial fluid that is not reabsorbed in the venule side goes to the lymphatic capillaries to make it back to the bloodstream. Colloid osmotic pressure occurs when suspended proteins cannot cross the capillary walls. Meanwhile, interstitial colloid osmotic pressure becomes low when the interstitial fluid contains small amounts of suspended proteins and some values are from 0 to 5 mercury. Going down to the diagram below, we can see that the red arrow depicts capillary hydrostatic pressure, the yellow arrow is blood colloid osmotic pressure, and the gray arrow is a net filtration pressure. As you can see on the arterial end of the capillary, we can see that the capillary hydrostatic pressure is greater than the blood colloid osmotic pressure since the capillary hydrostatic pressure is 35 mercury and the blood colloid osmotic pressure is 25 mercury. Therefore, capillary hydrostatic pressure is greater and fluid is moving out, which allows filtration to occur. On the venial end, however, we have the blood colloid osmotic pressure is greater than the capillary hydrostatic pressure. As you can see, the capillary hydrostatic pressure is 18 mercury and the blood colloid osmotic pressure is 25 mercury. So, fluid moves into the capillary and reabsorption occurs. Moving down, we have net filtration pressure, which is the difference between the net hydrostatic pressure and the net osmotic pressure. So to find the net filtration pressure, all you do is subtract the net hydrostatic pressure from the net osmotic pressure. The net fluid movement is calculated with the net filtration. If the value is positive, the fluid moves out of the capillary and into the interstitial fluid. But if the value is negative, the fluid moves into the capillary. The thoracic duct carries lymph originating in tissues inferior to the diaphragm and from the left side of the upper body. The smaller right lymphatic duct carries lymph from the rest of the body. The thoracic duct empties into the left subclavian vein, meanwhile the right lymphatic duct drains into the right subclavian vein as you can see there. The drainage of the thoracic duct occurs there as depicted in the picture, and the drainage of the right lymphatic duct occurs there since it is going into the right subclavian vein.